So this weekend, close to 200 mayors from around the country will gather for the annual Conference of Mayors meeting uh, being held in Columbus, Ohio. In addition to tackling issues like gun violence and homelessness, this year, the local leaders will focus on the mental health crisis plaguing Americans all across the country. And joining us now from the meeting is the mayor of Reno, Nevada, Hilary Shivi. She is uh, also serving as the vice president of the U.S. Conference on Mayors. And on Monday, will be sworn in as the group's next president. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Congratulations on everything. Um, let's get right down to work, though. On mental illness, how much does this play a role in the crisis of homelessness that uh, cities are seeing across the country? And, and what are some of the ideas that mayors can bring to the table to really tackle it? Well, it is massive. We know over 70 percent of sort of this crisis that's happening is due to mental illness and addiction. And none of us should have to have our loved ones arrested to get mental health help or treatment in this country. Um, I think it's the dirty, dark secret that we haven't been talking about yeah. for decades. And it is devastating our cities, truly um, and figuratively. But I will say what a lot of people probably don't know and why mayors are here and it's so critical is that we need fed federal legislation to pass. And so mayors are going to be fighting hard to bring that to the Hill. And the reason we need it is the majority of funding goes to the counties and to our states. It never comes mm -hmm. to the cities. And that is really, really challenging for us because remember, we are at ground zero. It's our first responders that are de dealing with this. It's our ERs that are getting um, impacted. It, so we have a major crisis at the city level because we can't seem to get that funding, especially in my city. I've been working for five years with my state and my county to get a 24-7 crisis center, and it's five years in the making, and we're just now getting that money to the cities. So the cities have to be at the table. That is incredibly broken, and we know mayors aren't getting the resources, we aren't getting the funding, and we um, have, you know, the biggest impact. You know, 71% of our homeless congregate in cities. We need to get them treatment. The policies we're using today are very, very broken. We've got to bring back, um, you know, acute care hospitals. You know, treating our mental illness in our jails is absolutely not working. And quite honestly, leaving people on the streets the way that we see our cities right now is very, very cruel, inhumane. It's a humanitarian crisis, and we need to do something completely different. Well, and when you're treating mental illness in jails or for people on the streets, which obviously they need the care, I'm not arguing that they shouldn't get it, but that's treating it after something terrible has happened. I mean, we're, we're getting to the point where, you know, you're treating someone who's had a complete and massive life breakdown and is either living trauma. on the street or is in jail and then the trauma that goes with that. So I'm curious if there will be any collective effort to address mental illness in schools, yes. in our young people, because we do have a generation yes. right now that data is showing going into young adulthood and dealing with massive mental health issues, depression, loneliness. You saw the U.S. Surgeon General's report. So what about trying to address the issue before exactly. it explodes out of control, social emotional training in schools? Yes. Well, that's exactly right. We have to be proactive instead of reactive, and government is very good at being reactive. So we've got to get into our schools early and often, like you're talking about. Here is a staggering statistic. Um, it's 49% of ages 18 to 24 are experienced experiencing anxiety and depression. What does that look like for our future? So we have got to get in the schools, like I said, early and often. It's about prevention. It's about education. And what scares me the most, out of that 49%, how many of them will use drugs to combat this? And so we've got a major crisis on our hands. But it's the yeah. stigma that no one has wanted to talk about. Uh, it, it really has been the dirty, dark secret. I know firsthand I lost my brother and my sister to mental illness and guess what I had to have them arrested to get help I had to take them to ERs to get help where they fix 
broken bones, not broken brains. That has got to change. Yeah. We have got to have access to treatment and to therapy. We also probably should make it mandated if you put someone on a 72 hour hold that they get treatment afterwards for a certain period yes. of time when they're suicidal. Those are very, very critical ways in which we can treat this. But we've got to treat it like you just said, in a, even at the kindergarten level, social emotional learning. And it's very, very important, but we're not talking about it enough. I think it's the number one crisis affecting America. If you look everywhere, you're seeing it on your streets and people mm -hmm. are going untreated. And like I said, we're treating them in our jails and it's unacceptable. So, Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. you just mentioned the issue of drugs being a part of this uh, terrible equation. Uh, you know, so many cities across this country really dealing with a scourge of opioids. Um, what, what, how can that right. be part of the plan here? What, what is the, the, the organization's effort to try to fight drug use and abuse in your city yeah. and others across the country? Well, and we've had mayors really tackle this head on. I, I was one of them. Mayor Nan Whaley from Dayton, Ohio was one of them. Uh, we went after the drug companies. We sued the op opioid manufacturers. We know uh, what devastating impacts that they have had right at the ground level at our cities, and we're seeing that. And we do have to take a very tough approach when it comes to drugs. Uh, we have to have access to treatment. Treatment in our country is very expensive. If you know anyone that's been through drug or alcohol treatment, it's very expensive. And quite frankly, only the people um, that can obtain it are people that have insurance or have money. We need to make that um, accessible everywhere. But we also have to get really, really strict on drugs. And if you think about it, fentanyl right now, um, these drugs that we're calling, uh, you know, weapons of mass destruction, that's what they are when they can kill hundreds, if not thousands of people. We need to start treating it as such. And so we've got to take a very strong approach and also looking at ways in which how they're coming into this country, how they're getting distributed. We have got to be very, very stern on the approaches that we take and have a zero tolerance policy for distribution. Mayor Hillary Sheevy of Reno, Nevada, thank you very much for coming on. We'd love to have you back and talk more about these issues. So really much. appreciate it. Thank you.